Good evening, brothers. Thursday night men's study. Um, I hope you don't get tired of hearing that we miss you. And um, it's, uh, it's just the reality of what we're going through. And, and, and maybe the, the, the good side of that is we are valuing and re-evaluating those things that maybe some of us took for granted. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm with the guys all the time Thursday night. And we appreciated it. I, I did. Um, but all the more now, for sure. And I know that's the case with, with Mike and with Todd. And, and, and Todd's going to be leading us tonight in worship. So we got that, that blessing to add to our, our evening. And, and the fact that you're uh, joining with us uh, is, is a blessing. Um, we're, we're staring into a, a lens, a camera lens. But, but just knowing that some of the bros are on the other side of that, so to speak. So uh, good to be with you in this odd way, uh, but still a way. And one we're thankful for. So, um, looking forward to what the Lord has for, for you and for me, for us here tonight. We've got some prayer requests. I'm going to take it right to prayer. And then we'll go right into uh, singing some praises uh, to our King. All right? So, if you'd join me, uh, and we'll lift up these, these needs, these petitions uh, of prayer. Well, Father, thank you uh, for, um, for this. Lord, I... Um, I can remember sometimes on Thursday nights in the cafe, walking up to the uh, little cafe stage there in the music stand and seeing a huge stack of, of prayer requests from my brothers, and some of which would, would write like a, like a physician, like a doctor, you know, with that illegible script and wonder what in the world that was. But Lord, you always sorted it out, and we were able to bring those things before you and, and just to... Uh, to lift them up, the various needs and situations and circumstances. And, um, and so, Lord, even that is something I so, I so miss, you know, the, the hard-to-read prayer request, but never hard for you. Um, and so just us bringing them to you is all that we really needed to do. And so the few that we have tonight, uh, Lord, it's that same uh, understanding um, that you are God, um, that we are a people with great need, and, and you are able um, Lord, you are, are more than able. So, Father, first bring in before you Sarah, uh, the, the wife of a good friend of, of our brother Mike um, here tonight, and uh, started her first chemo a treatment uh, today um, for her cancer, breast cancer. And so, Lord, we, we pray that that would totally eradicate that. Um, and, uh, Lord, just praying for her makes me think of something that's not even on my written list, uh, that's for our brother Dan, brother Dan Gleason, this faithful servant for decades here at Refuge and uh, overseeing um, our, our uh, ushers ministry um, and, and dealing with his own stuff, but st- with such a cheerful heart, Lord, thanks for his example, just the way he talks about what's going on with uh, that removal of the tumor from his brain and, and then all the chemo stuff that's getting ready to start, intense, um, but there's just such real, genuine joy and, and peace, Lord. So, Father, we pray for him. We pray you'd eradicate any trace of anything, uh, anything malignant, any, any trace of cancer floating around in his, his body. God, you'd just, you'd just get rid of it uh, and bless her brother. And, uh, and his wife, Carol, too, Lord, as she's recovering from her, her hip surgery uh, and then adding to all that, a lockdown. And, and, um, and yet, same thing with her, peace and joy. Uh, just fruit of the Spirit, walking with you, Lord. So bless them, heal them up. Uh, also, Lord, praying for uh, Marty's brother, Wally, uh, and he's um, in recovery after a very successful uh, surgical procedure in his heart and not needing to have open heart surgery, but stints taking care of it. And so, God, we pray that they would continue to do what they're supposed to do and that Wally would, would not only find physical rest in this recoup time, but, um, what, but internal rest peace in his heart in you from you lord not from circumstances but from you and lord our brother daniel um he's going to be having some procedure next month the later part of next month and and so father we we pray for that god we pray that um what needs to be done will be done and and there'll be restoration lord where restoration is needed and and just full strength for our brother daniel lord so Thank you for uh, his heart, too, and the way he walks through what he's, he's dealing with. Same with our brother Ed. Um, praying for him, Father. Uh, another one of those shots and his eye and just painful. Um, and, and yet, brother Ed, um, peace, joy in the midst of it. 
uh, prayer warrior and, uh, all through it. And so praying for him, Lord, for uh, just uh, the um, uh, removal of any pain that he may be experiencing and some restoration of sight uh, for our brother. Um, and then, Lord, for his prayer request, uh, for others, of course, veterans and active military. Uh, we always can count on our brother Ed to remember those that, that haven't forgotten us, those that have served us and are serving us, the families of those as well, Lord, and, and what they walk through and how they deal with their adversity and, and, and trauma coming home uh, from the battlefield and, and how that affects family and, and, and the individuals coming home, Lord. So we, we lift them before you and pray for your merciful touch, ministry to them, Father. Father, we also want to lift up, uh, as Ed has reminded me, to lift up uh, Caleb Short and his bride, Tabitha, and as she's uh, in the hospital, um, just making sure that that little baby is going to be okay as they plan for the, uh, the C-section delivery next week, Lord, just making sure and checking out some things with that little one's heart, and Lord, that, that, that baby girl has gone through so much um, in, in this time, uh, and, and clearly you've had your hand upon her and god we pray you continue to just to bring about uh it's a beautiful little girl in the delivery here next tuesday and then lord also um i guess in the general sense so much to pray for as it relates to this crisis and uh, the covid19 crisis and and first lord any of our refuge family that are, are dealing with it i haven't heard of any in our immediate refuge family of the two thousand folks um having been struck with it but probably uh, somebody that they know has uh, uh, an extended family member beyond the refuge family a co-worker what have you and uh, and so those are burdens on our refuge family and so we pray uh, for that lord and for your healing and lord we pray for that which is affecting everybody lord and, and that's um, the economic side of it lord that that is something that nobody escapes and um Lord, we, we pray for a quick resolution and quick restoration uh, to way, uh, the way uh, things uh, were in the sense uh, of just um, carrying on. Uh, Lord, that's something we're always supposed to do, to carry on, carry on till you come, uh, to, to work. Um, Lord, that's something big to you. It was big to the Apostle Paul, and we're studying one of his letters tonight that, that we that we need to work. We're wired to work, and, and um, we want to work. We don't want to go in debt. We want to work. And so, Lord, we pray that you would help that to be uh, something that comes to light in our own state as it is returning in many states in our union, Father. We pray for our leadership uh, in, in our nation's capital and our state capital, Lord. Uh, wisdom from above is, is just imperative, Father. And so we pray uh, that that would get through somehow, some way uh, to those that are decision makers that are affecting hundreds of millions of people just in our country alone, Lord. So, God, please, um, please bring this time to an end. And, Lord, all the purposes that you brought about through it, Lord, all the, the fruit that you're, you're bringing about, it's all good stuff. We thank you for it, Lord, and, and just the, the different things we've learned and the things you're doing, it's, it's good. Um, and, and yet, Lord, the, 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 the virus and the effects of it in, in, in all arenas, uh, the physical, spiritual, and the material, uh, emotional, Lord, um, we, we pray for just the, a restoration there, God. So, Lord, thanks. Thanks for, for hearing us out as always. Lord, thanks for the promise that we cling to every time we pray that, that somehow, some way, by your grace, these prayers actually mean something, Lord. They, they actually avail much. Um, thanks for that, Father. Uh, and, Lord, our desire now, um, having just... Um, poured out our hearts to you and, and just having thanked you for your goodness and your grace. Lord, we want to do that in song, Lord. It's, it's, uh, it's just a great vehicle. It's a great means um, to express our love and to express our, our hearts of thanksgiving, Lord. So please receive it as such as, as uh, uh, Mike and Todd lead us in worship of you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. All right, guys. Refuge family, sing with me from home. Let's hear it. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart.
sin runs deep your grace is more where grace is found is where you are and where you are lord i am free holiness is christ I need you, oh, I need you, every hour I need you, my one defense, my righteousness, oh God, how I need you, teach my soul rise to you when temptation comes my way when I cannot stand I'll fall on you Jesus you're my hope and stay Lord I need you oh I need My righteousness, oh God, how I need you. You unravel me with a melody. Surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies. All my fears are gone I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God my mother's womb you have chosen me love has called my name I've been born again into your family your blood flows through my veins I'm no longer a slave to fear child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God i 
sound I hear it in the thunder and rain It's ringing in the skies Like cannons in the night The music of the universe plays You are holy, great and mighty The moon and the stars declare who you are Father, you are great. Lord, thank you that we can come to you anytime, not just in this building, Lord, but anywhere, at any time, in any place, and uh, you're always there. You're always there with us, and so we love you, and we just want to commit this study tonight, Lord, to uh, give us, just give us ears to hear, Lord, and eyes to see, and we just pray this in Jesus' name, amen. 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 <sighs> Thanks, guys. There is, uh, at the risk of any um, visitors that, that are, are ladies or uh, like to sing in a higher register, I must confess, I, I love when the guys sing because it gets down to that lower key that's really very easy to sing to, so you don't have to uh, drop a, an octave because it's too high, it's just perfect, so thanks guys, appreciate it. Well, hey, Galatians chapter 2 uh, is where we are at tonight. We're picking up at verse 11. Uh, Brother Mike took us to uh, the first 10 verses uh, splendidly, in fact. It was, it was great. And um, so we're going to pick up where he left us. And um, it's looking forward to it. It's a great, great chapter, as we saw the beginning of, of it last week. But again, we'll finish it tonight. So... <sighs> I think we're, we're aware that, uh, and it's probably because of our human nature, that we remember, we, we remember great people, great, great men are, are remembered, and it's not just men, but great people are remembered um, typically uh, for their blunders. Uh, we remember the good things they do, but it seems like the, the blunders are, are what stands out, you know, poor choices. Uh, and, and as I've often said, I believe that's why the Holy Spirit had Paul right to all churches, not just the Philippian church, but to all churches, uh, to intentionally, to deliberately focus, ponder 
dwell on that which is, was true and right and pure and lovely, anything of a good report, to just really focus in on, on those things because we don't naturally do that. We don't. And so we focus on, on, on what's not true and right and pure and lovely. It, it's just our, our tendency, right? That's, that's why, you know, bad news is, is what sells. That's, that's why that's what's typically reported. And if it's not there, we'll make it bad. So it sounds bad and, and uh, it's, it's, um, it sells. So it, it, you see that even in our, our nation's history, you know, through, through the centuries and, and, and even founding fathers. We had some great, amazing leaders. Uh, I, I love American history. I'm right now reading David McCullough's book on John Adams. Um, and and that, that was the book that was used to make, if some of you have seen the HBO miniseries called John Adams, which I totally recommend. It's, it's excellent and it's captivating. Paul Giamatti plays John Adams and just nails it. But, um, you know, so we had these, these great men like John Adams and George Washington and, and Thomas Jefferson and yet, we remember poor choices. We remember blunders. You know, we, well, you know, Washington and Jefferson, you know, owned slaves. And yeah, they did. And there's, there's no escaping that, nor do we want. That's just the reality of it. Um, but, but it seems like that's the thing we remember most about them. I, I don't, but it just seems like in, in common that that's, that's the case. Um, and that's it, it, the case not just with our nation's history, but with church history. If we look, you know, currently... Um, you know, not, not to focus on, on, on whatever took place, and I don't know all the details, um, with a, a, a brother of a, a church in Florida, probably the largest Calvary Chapel uh, on the globe, and, and, and sadly, his, his screw-up, his egregious screw-up is what's remembered. We remember that God was a tremendous... Uh, teacher and used of God and, and loved the Lord and whatever got him down a road that he shouldn't have gone down is kind of what we remember. And then not just current church history, but early church history um, as well, uh, as we'll see tonight. And, and when we get to, to verse 11, um, we'll, see, we'll see that. So I, I thought what we would do is, is just read through. We don't need to, to, to comment on the first 10 verses because, as I said, Mike did a great job. But just to, to read through, um, and then we'll take it right through to verse 13. Uh, but we'll hit, obviously, as I said, verse 11, which kind of highlights what I'm talking about with um, somebody's poor choice, uh, somebody's blunder just popping out. Um, and, and so we read uh, Paul speaking here. Uh, verse 1, chapter 2. Then after 14 years, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas, uh, co-worker, co-labor, great team, these two guys, and, and also took Titus with me. And I, I went up by revelation, uh, the, the, the Lord's leading, and communicated to them that the gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, uh, but privately to those who were of reputation, uh, lest by any means I might run or had run in vain. Yet not even Titus, who was with me, uh, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised, and this occurred because a false brethren secretly brought in, who came in by stealth to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage, to whom, verse 5, to whom we didn't yield submission even for an hour, uh, that the truth, for this reason, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you, as he's speaking to the church in Galatia, and again, all churches, as is the case with all the epistles. But from those, verse 6, but from those who seem to be something, whatever they were, uh, it makes no difference to me because God shows no personal favoritism to, to any man. Uh, for those who seem to be something added nothing to me. But on the contrary, when they saw that the gospel for the uncircumcised, the, the non-Jew, uh, the, the, the Gentile, had been committed to me, just as the gospel for the circumcision, for, for the Jew, was committed to Peter. For He worked effectively in Peter for the apostleship uh, to the circumcised. Uh, also worked effectively in me towards the Gentiles. And verse 9 says, And, and so when James, uh, Cephas, of course Peter, uh, and John, who seemed to be pillars uh, there in the church in Jerusalem, um, they perceived the grace that had been given to me. They gave me and Barnabas, uh, the, the right hand of fellowship, that, that we should go to the Gentiles and, and they to the circumcised, that continue to, to, to reach out to the Jews, which is going to be the, 
by far and away, predominantly who's there in Jerusalem, where, where those pillars, as it were, uh, were living. Verse 10 says, They desired only that we should remember the poor, and specifically the poor in Jerusalem, the very thing which I also was eager to do. I mean, we know that was always Paul's heart. And here's where we get to the, the highlighted or low light, uh, a, a much, uh, amidst rather so much bright, brightness in, in, in the history of Peter. But here it is, and, and poor guy, it's recorded uh, for posterity. But anyway, verse 11. Now, when Peter had come to Antioch, uh, so that's the uh, big church in Syria, where, where Paul's home church, right? In, in, in what we would call Syria today. Uh, when, when Peter had come to Antioch, I withstood him to his face because he was to be blamed. For before certain men came from James, James being the, the half-brother of Jesus, uh, one of the, 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 the pillars, the leaders there in the church in, in Jerusalem, uh, before certain men came from James, he would eat with the Gentiles, uh, but when they came, he withdrew and he separated himself, fearing those who were of the circumcision. And, and the rest of the Jews also played the hypocrite with him, so that even Barnabas, Barnabas was carried away with their hypocrisy. So, so Peter, th- this leader, um, and I said you know, co-leader, co-pillar, if you will, in Jerusalem, they're really the prominent one. Whenever you, you see the listing of, of the, the apostles, uh, of the 12, you always see his, his name listed first um, in order. I, I'm reading through Acts and just my morning reading, no particular pace, just you know, little by little, and um, just noticing there even the beginning of Acts, the same thing. You list out the apostles, and boom, Peter's listed there, there first. Uh, and so when, when Peter was visiting in Antioch, Paul's home church, uh, Barnabas' home church, um, which is a predominantly uh, Gentile church for sure. Um, he was having great fellowship, as Paul said. It, just, it was great. And, and, and again, it's predominantly Gentiles, non Jews, okay? And Peter would enjoy uh, the, what we call the agape feast or the love feast. That you, you read throughout Scripture and Acts and some of the different epistles where, where Paul would talk about kind of this tradition. Uh, of the church on the, on the first day of the week, on Sunday, they would get together uh, and they would break bread. And so they would, it was like a potluck meal. And then also they would conclude it with communion, right? Celebrating the bread and the cup to remember the, the Lord's death on the cross for us. Um, and then their time in, in the word. And so they would have these potlucks. And, and so Peter enjoyed those, as, as Paul said. That was, he, everything was great. Because he had a sweet fellowship and, and um, and, and he knew that was cool because he had that great vision, right? We read it in the book of Acts with Peter's vision about uh, Cornelius, right? The Roman centurion and a Gentile and, you know, the, the tablecloth and this vision and he's, as he's there in Simon the Tanner's house up in the roof just taking a nice snooze, seaside snooze, and this vision of a tablecloth filled with great food, non-kosher animals, though. And, and then... Uh, the Lord speaking to him in that, in that vision, that dream, however that played out, to, hey, get up and eat. And Peter, in his dream, I can't do that. You know, that's it's not kosher. And then the Lord said, hey, don't, don't call unkosher or unclean that which I've called clean. And then that led to him going to see Cornelius, leading him to Christ, right? Uh, and so Peter got that. Uh, and he enjoyed that time with Cornelius and his family and seeing them saved and having fellowship with them. And the time in the potlucks in Antioch and and which would overflow with non-kosher food for sure. But when, as we read together, when some Jewish brothers, uh, believers in Jesus, came from James, uh, from Jerusalem, uh, so whether they were on an official mission, we don't know, but they, that's the connection point, is, is James, the half-brother of Jesus, one of the pillars of the church in Jerusalem. Uh, as we read, Peter withdrew as he would be mingling and, and sitting um, there in that church in, in Antioch, uh, withdrew from the Gentiles. I mean, think about that. You know, you have this potluck, and hey, Peter, man, tell us about this, and tell us about that, and man, thanks for being here. We can't wait to hear the message you got for us. It's going to be awesome. And, you know, pass the bacon, man. And, and so everything's cool. And then these, these guys come from Jerusalem, Jewish men. Peter's a Jew. Uh, but there's this sense like, uh, 
and so Peter leaves the table, withdraws from, from where he's hanging out and goes to a separate little area over here just with those guys. Um, it just, yeah, really, really strange. And so um, as a result, you have this public display because it's a big potluck feast. You have this public display of an incredibly damaging message without words. So Peter, Peter wasn't preaching a, a, a message but he was conveying something. He was conveying a message without words and publicly. And, 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 and this is dangerous. And so he got rebuked publicly by, by Paul. And, and, and remember at, at the time, that this is early in, in Paul's ministry when that took place in Antioch. Paul wasn't you know, one of the super apostles, like a B-apostle, right? I mean, he's... he's um, People knew Paul at the, those early years, and even Galatia, for that matter. They, they knew about, I know about the Saul of Tarsus guy, man. This is the guy that was out trying to, to um, arrest and, and uh, condemn, and if he could, kill Christians. And, and so that, that's, that's kind of what he was known for, his past radical life. Uh, he talked about that, matter of fact, in, in chapter 1, in verse 13, he made mention uh, that um, he said, for you've heard of my former conduct in Judaism, how I persecuted the church of God beyond measure. I tried to destroy it, uh, as he said uh, and described that. So more known for that, right, at, at this time. Not for all his future mission trips that would take place uh, and, and the fruit of that and the epistles and, and, and you know, the church plants and, and all. So nevertheless, it had to be addressed. It had to be corrected because it, it's potentially so damaging what Peter was saying, again, with, without words, and, and damaging um, to the effect that somebody like Barnabas, Barnabas the solid, right-on believer, uh, but a Jewish, a Jewish believer, believer in Jesus, um, he was impacted by that. He sees Peter withdraw, and, and he does. He got kind of sucked into this, like, eh, sorry, guys. I, and then he, he leaves the, the, whatever table he was sitting at to, to go over to this table where those guys from Jerusalem happen to be sitting. Yeah, I can't, I can't sit with you. And, and so, yeah, it, just, it wasn't just impacting you know, young believers there in Antioch, but somebody like, like Barnabas, right? So, Again, um, the, the rest of those, that, you know, they came with, with James. It wasn't just Peter. Uh, not with James, but from James, from Jerusalem. In verse 13, they, they played the hypocrite with him, with Peter. And, and again, as I said, Barnabas was carried away with their hypocrisy. So, hypocrisy, hypocrite. Um, just, just to make sure we understand what's going on here. When, when Paul would describe a hypocrite... I know some of you know this, but it's very important to the context here to, to, to make sure we go over this. He was speaking, he was using a word similar to how we would use it today, although it probably gets contorted a little, but a word that would just be a very common word to, to speak of an actor. Um, and, and, and from Greek tragedies, Greek plays, uh, hundreds of years prior to Paul's time, and even into his time as, as Rome ruled the world, but kept a lot of Greek culture. And so, this is really funky, but bear with me. You, you, had, um, you had masks, literal masks, uh, not made with paper, probably formed with clay and painted. Um, and so, you know, th this would be maybe used in a tragedy, and, and I don't know, they are both tragic to me, but, um, and, and this uh, happier face. And so the, the actors, they would hold them up to their faces, they would act out their, their play, and, and, and so it, the hypocrite was the one who wore the mask. The, the one who was portraying to be something that he was not, right? Uh, that's the idea. And so Peter was portraying something that he was not because Peter did not believe that Jewish Christians could not have fellowship with Gentiles. He didn't believe that, right? It, the, the first recorded encounter of, of reaching out to a, a Gentile and leading him to faith and having fellowship with him, it was Peter, right? And the story I, I, I just told you with Cornelius. So um, Peter didn't actually believe, as, as some Jewish believers did, he didn't uh, believe that, that you had to be a, a Jew first to be saved. 
And it, keep in mind for, for those guys, the struggle, um, it, it, I mean, this is how they were raised. And, and so sometimes we think, well, they just instantly need to be, you know, perfectly theologically sound. Uh, and I'm not speaking of Peter, but, but some, of the, some of the early believers, um, it's just not the case. So, you know, these guys, these are, they, they raised their whole life as, as Jews. They're the set-apart people, and they are. They still are. They're the chosen people, chosen to represent the grace of God, but chosen people. And, and so they, they, were, they were Jews. They were raised as Jews. They come to faith in Jesus in, in believing that, that Yeshua is the Mashiach, the, the Messiah, the Christ, the Anointed One, the Deliverer. Uh, they believe that. But they're thinking, well, I was a Jew first. I was kosher. I was, you know, part of the circumcision. Uh, and then I, I put my faith in, in Jesus as the Messiah, as the way, the truth, and, and the life. Um, and so they just concluded, yeah, you're a Jew first, and then you put your faith in, in, in Christ. So Peter didn't believe that, but he's conveying that. He's supporting that. He's contributing to that, that false notion, uh, even though he was a true believer. He put on a, a mask and acted as if you had to be a kosher Jew first to be a, a Christian. So there's a couple of problems here, obviously, uh, one of which is the minor problem. And, and the minor problem is from verse 12, uh, the, um, the, the guys that came from, uh, from James, um, uh, he would eat with the Gentiles, but when they came, he withdrew himself, separated himself, fearing those who were of the circumcision, fearing what they would think. That, that's a problem, right? Something I think everybody can relate to, you know, is that, that peer pressure. What do they think? What are they going to think if I don't do this? And, and that's why in Proverbs we read, um, so much wisdom, but, but and I should have looked up exactly where it was, sorry. Get your concordance, look it up yourself. Uh, the fear of man is a snare. It's a trap. What do they think? What will they think? And so, uh, minor by comparison, uh, but, yet, but it's a real issue. The bigger problem, uh, and the reason why this was so egregious uh, to convey that, this message without words is because it's a lie. That, that message is, is a lie. It's not the true gospel. In, in verse 14, the beginning of it says, in Paul speaking, but when I saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel, in other words, they, they had twisted the gospel, they weren't straightforward with it, when Paul saw that, it, it had to be dealt with. Because Peter's public hypocrisy uh, that was affecting people there had to be corrected publicly. And, and it wasn't to humiliate Peter, right? Because why Paul's not going to do that. Um, and, and yet, Paul had to do that, even though this is Peter. I mean, he's the guy, he's the number one on the list. You know, all oh, the list of the apostles. First, it's Peter. He's always he's listed there. And, and it had to be addressed to correct this, this distortion, it, perversion, really, a perversion uh, of the gospel. Because Peter's hypocrisy um, could have severe consequences. Uh, First and foremost is, is twisting, perverting, distorting the gospel. Um, and, and, and so it had to be dealt with. It wasn't something that, that, that only affected Peter. That, that would have been a different case. I mean, if Peter did something on his own or whatever, I mean, Paul could have talked to him privately. But I mean, th this had to be dealt with because those people are there that, that are being affected by this when, when that happened, as Paul recounts this happening in, in Antioch. Um, and so the hypocrisy could have severe consequences. And again, hypocrisy because it was like a mask. Peter didn't believe that, um, but he, um, he certainly painted that, that picture or conveyed that. He portrayed that. Let's read verse 14 again. When I saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel, I said to Peter before them all, if you, being a Jew, live in the manner of Gentiles and not as the Jews, why do you compel Gentiles to live as Jews? In other words, hey, you, you've, you've lived as a Gentile in, in the sense that for, as far back as Cornelius, when that, that whole thing went down with Cornelius, back there in, in Caesarea, uh, there on the coast of Israel. 
He knows the story about that and, and Cornelius being is this Gentile. And, and then the time in Antioch. So Paul was there. So, yeah, you know, um, and, and for, during that time that Peter was there, however long it was that he was there before he had to be rebuked, having non-kosher food. It's a Gentile, it's a bunch of Gentile believers. So he's enjoying it, probably. And, and hey, I get it. It's good stuff, right? The, the ham sandwiches and, and whatever. So um, the message without words that, that Peter was conveying was compelling. Uh, and, and yet Paul's saying, hey, you, you yourself, um, you, you live in the manner of a Gentile. Why would you compel a Gentile to live as a Jew? It's, 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 it's contradictory. We, verse 15, uh, who are, are Jews by nature and not sinners of, of the, the Gentiles, uh, and, and so when it says, I mean, we who by nature we were raised, we just, we, we're Jews, and, and we are raised to obey the Mosaic laws, um, and we were not uh, mosaic lawbreakers, sinners in that sense, is the Gentiles. I mean, the Gentile obviously doesn't know the Mosaic law. It is doing all kinds of stuff that's contrary to the Mosaic law. Um, we weren't that, right? We who were Jews by nature and not, not sinners, and he's not saying that we weren't sinners. He's saying we weren't, weren't sinners in the, in the sense that the Gentiles were, that they were just perpetually, automatically just breaking the, the Mosaic law. We... Um, Peter, hey, you and I, we're, you know, we're, we're both Jews. Um, we knowing, verse 16, that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in, in Christ Jesus, that we might be justified by faith in Christ, and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law no flesh shall be justified. And so, Again, Paul's saying to Peter, hey, when he had this encounter with him, we know, we know that even as good Jews, we, we knew this, that, that when it came to faith, right? That, that we won't be justified before the, before the Lord, before God the Father. Uh, even though we had the right list of laws and rituals and practices, we had the right list um, for sure. Uh, but that's why we believed, Peter. That's why we believed it in, in Jesus. So that we could, in fact, be saved. So that we could, in fact, be justified. That we could, in fact, have things made right with, with God. Um, because, as, as we read there, no fleshly, no human effort can justify, no, can, can square accounts um, with God. Nobody can. No effort can. Uh, and so by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified, as he said. Um, it doesn't matter. No, no flesh. It doesn't matter if you're Gentile or a Jew. Nobody. So not, not, not just the Gentiles, Peter. The, the Jew as well. You can't be justified by obeying the law. And, and again, he's saying, because Peter, you know that. That's why I'm saying you're a hypocrite, because you do know that. You know that. Verse 17. But if, while we seek... While we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is Christ therefore a minister of sin? Certainly not. Certainly not. For if I build again those things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. So in other words, if I'm seeking to be justified by Christ, yet I sin uh, you know, I mean, by eating non-kosher in, in that sense, which is totally fine with Christ. Um, so that doesn't, that doesn't um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, it doesn't make a man un unclean, uh, as Jesus said, uh, wh what he consumes. Um, and so if I do that, um, and, and, which is okay with Christ, although Peter, you, you seemingly seem to say that it's, it's not there by the way you acted at the table, um, then is Jesus, Jesus, is he complicit in my sin? Well, certainly not. As he said, there's, there's no way. This is very emphatic. Exclamation point. Certainly not. But, as verse 18 says, if, if I tried to, I like the way he put that, if I tried to build again, build this road or build a bridge or, or, or build this way to God, which is the very thing I destroyed, I, I said, be done with that. I can't work. Because if anyone could have pulled that off, it would have been Paul. <laughs> and he couldn't even do it in, in terms of being... Uh, 100% uh, obedient um, to, to law. Um, 
if I tried to build that again, that, that system, uh, then I actually end up making myself a lost sinner, a transgressor. That's what he's saying in verse 18, if I try to build that again, because that, that, that just reveals I am a sinner, because it doesn't work. And that's why he can say that his previous life of attempting to be righteous before God, which he, he attempted like no other, Paul did, uh, he says it was crucified. All that, that, that attempt was crucified in the cross. Look at verse 19. Uh, For I, through the law, died to the law, so that I might live to God. So that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ. And so Paul, stating that the law, it, it killed me. It, 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 it condemned me. I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, still in verse 20, no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me, which is awesome, right? And the life which I now live, I live, uh, which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me. Not that he doesn't still love him, but he's talking about loved him by going to the cross and gave himself for me, as he, as he says there. So God so, so loved whosoever, right? John three sixteen. God so loved the world and gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe in Him, which, which means anyone. That's the idea of saying whosoever, anyone. Um, that's you, that's me. And Jesus gave Himself for you and for me and, and Paul, as He said there uh, as well. And then verse 21, this, this summit, uh, this uh, summary summit um, that uh, we talked about a few weeks ago a little as we snuck ahead and looked at it. But verse 21, last verse of, of our chapter, I don't set aside the grace of God. For if righteousness, right standing, right? Right standing with God. If that comes through the law, if, and that's that's a key word there, if that were true, if righteousness comes through the law, here's the law, obey it. If that were the case, then Christ died in vain. Christ died in vain. He wasted his time. Totally, (laughs) he didn't need to do that. You wasted your time. Um, and so what Peter unintentionally, unintentionally, very important, um, suggested by his actions, which shows you our actions are so powerful, uh, he was suggesting setting aside the grace of God and, and rebuilding a human system to make things right with God. Uh, that's setting aside the grace of God when you do that. And setting aside the grace of God ultimately means, in those last few words of verse 21, Christ died in vain. You set aside the grace of God, Christ died in vain. Remember, in, um, in reading in the Gospel accounts, in, in the Garden of Gethsemane, there over uh, on the Mount of Olives, right there uh, in the eastern side of Jerusalem. You can see you know, the Temple Mount and all there. And so that night before Jesus went to the cross and He's praying, He said, Father, because he, he knows what's coming. Um, he knows he's going to take on the sin of humanity and what that's going to do to this perfect union and fellowship with the Father and then the death and the cross. But, but the, the weight of taking on the sin of the world, Father, if there's any other way to, to do this, what, what is this? This is to, to um, reconcile mankind with, with you, Father. If there's any other way to do this, let this cut pass. If there's any other way we can do it, if it, building a system, teaching people how to, if there's any other way that they can be made right, let this cut pass. But there isn't. There wasn't. And the cup didn't pass. Jesus went to the cross. He took on the sin of the world. And so you and I are saved by that gracious act, by grace alone, right? You, you know the, 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 the expression that, that we use to try to help us um, uh, just in one sentence convey how our salvation comes about we're saved by grace alone through faith alone in christ alone not through christ and me through christ alone and so it's jesus sacrifice it's not jesus sacrifice plus my obedience to the law either so it's it's not even eliminating jesus even if you add to it say well it's it's jesus sacrifice his death on the cross his great life his great example death on the cross and then my obedience to the law uh or my law even it's not just a mosaic law my my system uh that that's that's not it that's not the gospel christ died in vain if that's the case or if it's jesus sacrifice and my baptism 
or if it's Jesus' sacrifice in my membership in, in a certain church. So any of those, and you could go on with the long, long list uh, of, of possible Jesus' death plus, uh, and if you hold to any of those, anything like that, then Christ died in vain. You're, 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 you're setting aside the, the grace of God, which is what legalism does. And, and, and really, this, this perpetuates legalism. Legalism is just establishing uh, uh, or uh, using a system, establishing and or using a system of do's and don'ts uh, to get right and to stay right with God. This is how I stay right. This is how I stay saved. This is how I get saved. This is how I stay saved. I do this, I don't do that. Uh, and then that saves me and it keeps me saved. Um, that, that's legalism. And, and it's interesting when you think about it, that, that uh, the irony of it, that the legalism is just another form of carnality, right? That appeals to my carnal, my, my, my natural, fleshly nature, my old nature. And even legalism does that. And we, we think of carnality being carnal as just a license to do whatever I want, man. Whatever I want, you know, anything goes. Doesn't matter. Um, and it, just, it appeals to my, my fleshly, carnal desires. Yet... Yeah, that's, that's true. Doing whatever you feel like naturally doing will feed your, you carnally and, and is carnality. But also the pride that comes with um, supposedly knowing, oh, I earned my status with God. I earned this uh, because look at how the life I live. That, that's carnality as well. Different kind, but, but it's carnality nonetheless. So this observation about carnality, it should help us see um, this, this, this passage, it's so much more than a history lesson. And if that's all we come away with is, oh, that was interesting, you know, what took place there, and, you know, and as Paul's teaching the, the church in, in the churches in that region called Galatia about something that took place prior to that in Antioch, yeah, it's interesting in history. That, that's sad, because there's so much more. This, is, this relates to us now. It, it relates to us in, in, in church history and, and in our future. And, and shows you how, how easily this can happen. That was Peter, right? It, it, wasn't, it, it wasn't Peter before he trusted in, in Jesus as Lord and Savior. It wasn't Peter before he was empowered and emboldened by the Holy Spirit. It wasn't Peter before he had this track record of, of just bearing lots of fruit and just doing great things for God and having a great walk with God and being just a stellar guy. It was Peter after all of that. It was post that. And, and so it shows you, again, how easily this can happen. And, and that's why I'm really stressing. We've we, we got to make sure we, we don't miss this. Because you could just look at it, oh, yeah, that's a bummer, man. How, how, you, know, you can't do that, Peter. But it's Peter. It happened to him. Why, why don't you think that could happen to you or me? It, it's, we, we can be sucked into that. And, and, and so th there's a lesson there. And then also, you know, just the, the, the understanding as well uh, of how dangerous an impact legalism can have on others. And we may not teach it. You know, it's not like I, you know, Peter was teaching it because he wouldn't, because he didn't believe it, but he conveyed it just by the, what he did, by his actions. And so you and I, our actions, the things we do, they're, they're pretty powerful. And, and we've got to say, what's the message? It's not just the message of my mouth, because I can say, hey, let me tell you, the only way a person can get saved and get right with God, can square accounts with God, is by grace, unmerited favor, by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. And I, I could say those words, but I could contradict those words. I could be a hypocrite. I could put on a mask that says something different, that, that says, well, you know, and you have to make sure that you do this, this, and this, and don't do that, that, and that, and then you'll really be saved and then you'll stay saved. Something that Peter would never say in words, but he conveyed. Something that you and I, I think, I trust, would never say with words, but we could convey that. We, we need to be careful. Am I conveying that message somehow, some way? Um, and, and so realizing that, and then realizing the impact it could have um, on others, because Barnabas got temporarily sucked into that. Uh, and, and another solid, um, right on, uh, servant of the Lord, right? Not, not, not a newbie, not a green pea in the faith, 
um, but, but Barnabas. So good stuff, uh, timeless, right? It's the Word of God. Of course it's timeless. And I hope that, um, that you and I can um, take it with us and make sure man, that we don't, we don't go down that road and, and, and wreak havoc um, for others and, and distort. We don't want to distort, right? We don't want to pervert the gospel. The, the gospel is beautiful. It's pure. Um, let, let's just um, let's, um, convey it, uh, proclaim it uh, for what it is with our words, but with, with our, our lives, our actions as well. Right? Amen? Let's pray. Well, Father, thanks uh, once again um, for providing uh, your word. Um, Lord, you, you've given it to us, um, and it's part of what we have to walk out this journey. Um, your spirit inside of us, uh, Christ in us, the hope of glory, the, the, the reality of, <clears throat> of your spirit inside of us, empowering us, leading us, uh, illuminating your word to us, and then, of course, your word. Lord, you've given us that. So we thank you for it and uh, just pray that it would have its, its perfect work in us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, God bless you guys.